Okay, let's go ahead and answer this question. And the question is, what are the prime factors of 80? Now, this probably seems like a pretty basic uh, problem to a lot of you out there, and hopefully it is. And if you know how to do this problem, I'm going to put your answer into the comment section. But what I find is uh, a lot of students out there, they kind of th uh, are not really strong enough in the fundamentals, okay? They're kind of like, oh, I know that, I know that. But they really don't know things that are kind of basic, that are extremely important in mathematics. And I want to make sure you truly understand prime factors and how to, prime, uh, how to find prime factors of numbers. So we're going to get into all of this in just one second. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the answer to this, and then we're going to go into how to find prime factors of numbers. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. It is my true passion. And I can tell you right now, you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that tend to struggle in math, okay? You don't have to struggle in math if you have the desire to learn math. If you really want to learn math, now if you don't want to learn math, then you're going to, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult to get you to do math if you don't want to do math, right? But what you need is encouragement and most importantly, great math instruction. Math instruction you actually understand, clear, comprehensive, and again, understandable. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for uh, some sort of special test that has math on it. I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, maybe the uh, nursing school entrance exam, like the TEAS or teacher certification exam. All these exams are very, very important for those of the, <laughs> those people who are going to be taking this. And a lot of you are going to be taking an exam like this. You don't even realize it. If you're going to college, or some sort of secondary training, you will be taking some sort of placement or entrance exam. It's important to be prepared for those. And if you homeschool mathematics, you definitely want to check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description because you definitely need something to study from, okay? How are you gonna retain all this information? You have to be a great note taker. I know a lot of you struggle with note taking, I did, but get better at notes and you will uh, just get better at math. But in the meantime, you can use my math notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the answer here in a second, but what we have to do uh, here is understand these words, prime, and factors, because if you don't understand what a prime number is or what a factor is, then you know this isn't gonna make sense to you. But let me go ahead and show you the answer here. So the prime factors of 80, you can list them as this, two times two times two times two times five, and two times two times two. This can be written as two to the fourth. So the probably the most technical correct way to write the prime factors of 80 is two to the fourth times five. Okay, so how did you do? Did you get this right? Well, if you got this right, that would be very impressive. I'm gonna give you a nice happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars to celebrate your awesomeness in math today. Okay, so nice job. But let's go ahead and get into prime factors. This is gonna be um, not that long of a video. We'll take a look at a couple problems, but before we even look at a problem, Let's just take a look at the word that we're trying to figure out, right? Prime factors. We have two words here, prime and factors. What are we talking about here? Well, the first part of, the, of what we're trying to do is find something about something out about prime. Prime what? Well, prime numbers. So let's just recall what a prime number is. So here is a bunch of prime numbers. We have 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. It goes on and on and on. Now, the interesting about prime uh, thing about prime numbers is that here, there seems to be kind of somewhat of a pattern of where prime numbers, um, where we can find prime numbers. But before I even talk about the pattern here, let me just, let's just look at these numbers. Why are these numbers prime? Okay, so that's a question to you. If you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. But effectively, a prime number like a number like seven here, the only way we can get a seven is one times seven. It's not like a number like eight where we can go two times four, right? With two different numbers. The only way to get these numbers is just one time this uh, this number, okay? These prime numbers. So 
the only factors of a prime number is one and the number itself. So let me kind of come back. I'll come back to prime numbers here in a uh, second, but let's talk about the word factor. So what is a factor? So let's look at 10, all right? So if we find the product of two and five, if we multiply two times five, we get 10, okay? So the numbers two and five that we're multiplying here, okay, this is the product of two and five, but these numbers here, we refer to as factors of 10, okay? So if we wanna know factors of 10, two and five would be factors of 10. And matter of fact, two and five are also prime numbers. So uh, if I was to ask you, what are the prime factors of 10? It would be two and five. We don't really have to list one as a prime factor because it's just kind of, you know, already assumed that, you know, uh, every, you pretty much know that one is in fact a factor of any number. Okay, so now uh, hopefully you got a basic understanding of what factors are and about prime numbers. But let me kind of go back uh, to this list of prime numbers. This is a pretty little, uh, uh, interesting little fact here, okay? So let's suppose I said, hey, write out as many prime numbers as you can up to 1,000, okay? So you'd have to continue to try to figure out, like here the next prime number would be what? 19. So let's say uh, you didn't know that 18 was prime or not, right? So what would you do? Well, you would just start testing numbers here that could go into 18. Oh, 18 divided by two is nine. So uh, because 18 has a factor that's other than just one and the number, so like two times nine, 18 is not a prime number, but 19 would. But here's the cool thing about prime numbers, and the prime numbers are very, very, very important in mathematics and a lot of things uh, like cyber uh, security, uh, code breaking. You might be saying, well, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I thought this was about prime factorization. Well, it is about prime uh, factorization, but here's the deal. If you go out to like uh, out to like a thousand, a thousand numbers, right? So we continue, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We just kind of keep going out. It becomes more and more difficult to find prime numbers, right? So if you had, let's say, a uh, hundred thousand, okay, and I said, okay, find all the prime numbers up to 100,000. That would not be an easy task because what ends up happening, the prime numbers, it looks like they're kind of separated kind of closely here, but as you count, uh, uh, as you continue to count and the numbers get larger and larger uh, way, prime numbers start having all kinds of crazy um patterns. Effectively, there is no pattern. Some, sometimes it can be very far apart. Sometimes it can be uh, near each other. So there is no rhyme or reason, and it becomes very difficult to find with when we're dealing with very, 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 very large numbers. So because prime numbers become very difficult to find, they're used for like code breaking. They're used for like security, like secret numbers that are very difficult for someone to figure out. So that's a whole nother discussion, but it's an interesting thing about prime numbers that they become very difficult to prime. I mean, so not to prime, but <laughs> fine. But another question in mathematics is, um, is there an infinite or finite amount of prime numbers? Okay, like is there only so many prime numbers in the universe because we can't find them all? Do we effectively run out of prime numbers? Well, the answer is no, there is an infinite amount of prime numbers, but we are talking about pretty uh, sophisticated mathematics in order to prove that. But anyways, I wanted to kind of uh, float that out here, some of these nice little interesting tidbits about prime numbers. I probably care about it much more than you do, but now you know more about prime numbers than you thought you were going to by watching this video. Okay, so let's get into prime factorization now. All right, so we understand what a prime number is and what a factor is. So to find prime factors, what you want to do is use something called a factor tree. So I have an example of a factor tree right here, and it's effectively, it looks kind of like, you know, branches of a tree. So here's how a, a factor tree works. So let's find the prime factors of 20. Okay, so how does it work? Well, you're just gonna take your 20 and you're gonna find two factors of 20. Now. Here I have four times five. I'm just thinking of two numbers that when I multiply them together, it's 20. And of course, you're not going to use one. That's not going to help you out. So you could go two times 10 as well. So if you said, oh, I could go two times 10, that's perfectly fine. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to effectively start branching off further, right? So 
Um, anyways, it doesn't make a difference what numbers you start with. Your final answer will be the same. So I'm going to use 20 here um, uh, as our example, and I'm going to start this off by 4 times 5. Again, you could go 2 times 10. doesn't make a difference. So when you uh, these here are factors of 20, okay, because 4 times 5 is 20. And you want to look at these factors, and you want to circle any prime factors that you have. So 4 and 5. Ask yourself, is 4 prime? No, so I'm not going to circle it, right? Is 5 a prime number? Yes, so circle that. Okay, so now we're done, and our branches, we can't continue on here. We're effectively done along this branch. So 4, we can factor as what? 2 times 2, and 2 and 2 are prime, so we just circle those. So 2 times 2 times 5 is 20. So the prime factors are 20 would be 2 times 2 times 5, and again, when you can write your prime factors as powers, go ahead and do so. So 2 times 2 is the same thing as 2 squared times 5. Okay, so that's an easy example of a prime um, of a factor tree. And again, here, let's just take a look at this example. We have 20. If I went off uh, this way, I've kind of built my tree as 2 times 10. This would be a prime factor. And then 10 would be what? This would be 2 times 5. So you can see here, I'm circling my prime factors, 2 times 2 times 5, 2 times 2 times 5. So don't be afraid just to get your problem started. There's no perfect uh, way. Don't overthink it, I guess, is what I'm saying, because you will get uh, to the right answer. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and tackle our original question. What is the prime factors of 80? All right, so I'm just thinking of two numbers right off the top of my head that I know uh, are factors of 80. So 8 times 10 is 80. You could go 2 times 40 again. It doesn't make a difference. So 8 and 10, I'm going to look at these factors. Are they prime? No, they are not prime. So we'll start with 10 over here. So 10, I'm going to go, oh, that's 2 times 5. That's 10. And 2 and 5 are prime. So you're going to circle those prime numbers. Okay, so now you have 8, so we're going to break that down as 4 times 2. 2 is prime, but 4 is not, so I'm going to continue to uh, factor 4, and I have 2 times 2. So now uh, I have all my prime factors right here. So I have a 2, a 2, a 2, and a 2. So I have four 2s and a 5. So all of these here are uh, my prime factors of 80, and I can write that as... 80 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? So we have four twos, which, of course, we want to write as 2 to the fourth power times 5. So these are the prime factors of 80. Now, if you look here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the fourth, this is 16, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So 16 times 5, guess what? That is 80, but these are the prime factors. So prime factors or uh, prime factorization is critical. Let me ask you a nice little pop quiz question here. Why do we, or when do we use prime factors, okay? One would be an example of where we use prime factorization of numbers like this, okay? Well, if you know an answer to that, I'm not giving you much time out to put that into the comment section, but when you're trying to find the lowest common denominator, or lowest common multiple, you need to be able to factor the denominators into their prime factors, okay? So this is what you're doing. So this is a necessary skill, right? This is not like a trivial little thing. Hey, what's prime factors? Ah, I don't really need to know this stuff. You absolutely do, okay? So prime factors are critical to your success in fraction and uh, fractions and other things as well. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If you need help with more like basic math, let me come, uh, a couple of quick recommendations here. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on basic mathematics. And I also have a nice uh, little mini course. I call it my Math Foundations course. It's a three-chapter course. It's a great review for those of you that uh, need to get uh, into mathematics or back into math again. So it kind of covers all the stuff that we forgot in elementary school, fractions, prime factorization, place value, percent, so that's a great starter course um, if you're looking to kind of get back into mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.